So last year I quit my smartphone for a year, or dumbed down my smartphone to all the essentials. Maps, notes, Angry Birds. I don't have Angry Birds. And I made a video about it, a lot of you watched it, we had a good time. Hooray! But I want to talk specifically about one thing that it gave me that I am really enjoying still. You might call it a superpower, especially if you want to make an interesting title about it. So what am I talking about? Heat vision. Nope. Solitude. Or the joy of being alone. And I'm not talking about SOLITUDE! I'm not talking about a hundred years of solitude. That's my favorite book, but my version has much less tragedy and lots of people with the same name. About the same amount of bananas, though. I eat a lot of bananas. No, no. The comfort in being alone, feeling alone, letting your mind wander. Now, I've actually had this ability before. Before the internet became such a big deal, a lot of people spend a lot of time just in their own heads. And I especially got comfortable on my own when I moved into an apartment by myself, the first apartment for this YouTube channel. Kids, <clears throat> I think if you have the means, living on your own can really teach you a lot about yourself. I enjoyed all my roommates, and I'm still friends with them, but I think living alone was one of the best things I did. Now, it's not like I was able to do this because I had a lot of money. I did not, and in fact was taking a big risk, but I did find a super dirt cheap apartment just happened to be above a bar so that's why it was so cheap but also it happened to be my favorite bar which was great but also not great for my health anyway i was forced to take care of everything myself the mess around me was my mess no excuses i got comfortable finding my own ways to enjoy myself like por portal the game portal is really good but also i just had quiet moments of sitting and thinking And perhaps because I lived alone for so long and realized I could enjoy life by myself, I think it made me better as a partner, as a husband. Anyway, I gained that skill back then, but I kind of lost it when I got a smartphone. I remember when I first got a smartphone telling my friends, it's like you're never bored. It's awesome. You're waiting in line for something, you have something to do. I thought that was amazing and the world was forever changed for the better because of that. I was so wrong. It's so stupid now that you have to remind yourself of the value of being bored. That was never a problem before. There was too much boredom. And it's not like I lived in the Stone Age. We had TV, we had the internet. Imagine how boring it was before TV. No wonder there were so many wars. Nothing else to do. I'm glad we're over that and there's no more wars. Hmm. Anyway, maybe at that time it was just the right amount of boredom, and then the smartphone pushed us over the edge into a mental health minefield. We got Steve Jobbed in the worst way. I mean, not, it was, there's, okay, my dog is itching herself down here. Hey, bunny, come here. I was just in the middle of saying how the smartphone is not so bad. There's a lot of good things about it. This isn't an anti-smartphone video, but just we got to remember that being alone with our own thoughts is very valuable, right Bunny? You spend a lot of time alone with your own thoughts. So yeah, I quit my smartphone for a year. It reminded me of the time when I used to enjoy being alone and now I can do it again ever since and uh, everything's good. Praise the flying spaghetti monster. So why is it good? What's so good about sitting alone with your thoughts? I know a lot of people probably are like, that's fine. I do it all the time. And some people are like, that terrifies me. And let's be clear. I'm not talking about being lonely. You can be alone without being lonely. You can also be lonely without being alone. Is that, um, did I say that right? I think I did. I remember talking to someone who lived in New York City and said it's odd how you can feel alone in this city when you're surrounded by so many people. Even near Guy Fieri's bar. Also, this woman keeps looking at the camera and ruining the shot. But we're not talking about loneliness, we're talking about being alone. I think what's useful about letting your mind wander can fall in two categories, creative or mental health. On the creative side, for me, it's about decision making, strengthening ideas, or creating ideas. When I need a new idea for a video, I often fall into the trap of just searching the internet, reading the news, comments, reading what people are talking about, finding videos or articles that I may want to riff on. US no longer ranks among the world's 20 happiest countries. More like Desperica. <laughs> and that is a fine way to generate ideas, but inevitably, for me, it feels pretty stale and boring. I'm just doing what others are doing. And with all that research, I get bogged down in the technical details without really even thinking about how true it is for me. For this video, I actually wrote a script. It had a lot of technical stuff, and I was like, whoa, stop, why don't you sit and think about this for a while? And usually when I just sit and think about an idea, I have more time to come at it from different angles, when I'm in different moods, when I'm in a house, when I'm with a mouse, when I'm in a blouse. So it's good for strengthening ideas I find on the internet, but also coming up with my own ideas. I think some of my best, most fresh ideas come from just random thoughts. Thinking about life, observing the world around me, thinking about my own experience. It's really hard to do that when you're looking at your phone all the time. Where is my phone? 
Ah, right there. And it's not just about looking at your phone, looking at your, the internet or watching TV or having other people around, literally being alone and feeling alone. Now, to be clear, I love my wife and daughter and they make my life better than anything. So I'm, I'm just saying sometimes it gotta be me, you know? I'm, this isn't some sort of announcement that I'm getting a divorce or as my mom would say, divorce. She says it in a funny way. Uh, language is regional and ever-changing. You tell him, Wolf. Uh, what? That's the way I say wife. Regionally. We're getting a divorce. So they seem stressed. They should spend some time by themselves with their thoughts and work it out. Maybe even write in a journal. Okay, we're gonna get to the next thing on the list, but now I'm reminded of my favorite way to write in a journal, legitimately, which also happens to be the sponsor of this video. Day one, it's a journaling app, which you do alone. So appropriate for this video. I've made lots of videos about journaling. I've tried many different kinds of journaling and I've tried many different apps. I've named my middle name journaling. I've just changed it just now, I decided. But I've landed on day one as my favorite place to journal, especially the way I journal, which is a brain dump. Dump, letting my mind wander. I especially like the premium version because then it's in the cloud and it's connected to my laptop and my computer. Often when I find myself stressed or worried, besides sitting alone with my thoughts, writing my thoughts down is wonderful. Sometimes when I'm laying in my bed and things are reeling in my brain, if I write them down, it's like getting them out of there. Often I'll start typing and then I'll write a friggin' novel and I won't even know that I had all of that in me. The last time I ended up with To Kill a Mockingbird, independently, I had no idea. I really like how each day it will bring in the things you did in your schedule and all the pictures you may have taken. But perhaps my favorite thing is the daily prompts. One simple question that it will give you if you don't know how to get started. And I'll start typing and answering and then I will just go off on and type for a long time. Today's daily prompt, what are three things that made you smile today? Bunny, my daughter making a joke about farts earlier. The banjo face I'm gonna do right now. I can take a picture of myself to commemorate the moment, start typing that up and see what else I end up typing. And you can set up different journals if you want to chronicle a family trip or the process of building a birdhouse or every time that you eat pizza. You can have a whole journal of restaurant reviews so you don't forget about that awful jack-in-the-box you went to in Vegas that one time. You get two months free of the premium version if you go to dayoneapp.com slash wheezy and use code wheezy. It's linked right down there. dayoneapp.com slash wheezy code wheezy to get two months free of the premium version. Just start dumping your brain into your journal. Thank you, Day One, for sponsoring. Now back to the show. And then there's decision making, which I put in the creative side, but it's actually kind of its own thing because it kind of fits both in mental health and creative. See, this is why a script is a good thing. I've always had this tendency in my life to not be quick with decisions. I'm pretty slow and I actually annoy people in this way. But I often require sitting and thinking and weighing the pros and cons of things. I literally do not know what my preference is sometimes. Well, it be, well we better go this way because then we're going to lead down that path, we're going to lead down that path. And usually there isn't really a right decision and I know that. It's just I need time to think about what I truly want. Kind of like the Ents in Lord of the Rings. We never say anything unless it is worth taking a long time. Yeah, yeah, I've always thought of myself as a giant tree. Not really like a focused pros and cons list, just like literally just sitting and thinking for a while. Going off on tangents. I love going off on tangent. Hang on a second. I think the coffee's done. <clears throat> I love it when the coffee's done. And then of course, mental health. If you're not used to it, sitting and letting your mind wander might seem stressful at first, but I really believe it's one of the best ways to reduce stress and anxiety. Maybe it doesn't work for everybody. None of this works for everybody. I'm just one guy speaking from my own experience. Often I'll sit and analyze whatever is bothering me and maybe project into the future like, well, if this bad thing happens, I discover that I'm blowing it out of proportion. Sometimes I figure out that, oh, maybe I should change this up or that up. Maybe I should try to quit my smartphone for a year. Maybe I should try to quit alcohol for a year. Maybe I should try to quit coffee for three months. Maybe I should try blah, blah, blah. That's combining my creative ideas with my health ideas. Mm, double duty. Now here are some quotes and you know they're true because they lived a long time ago. And when I say them, it makes me sound smart. So here we go. All of humanity's problems stem from a man's inability to sit quietly in a room alone. They only referred to men back then because that was the only gender back then apparently. Be alone. That is the secret of invention. Be alone. That is when ideas are born. And that's from the guy who invented the electric car. Oh wait, no, he founded the band. Then the car company was inspired by the band. And then a more modern quote from perhaps the greatest thinkers of our generation. They might be giants. Leave me alone. Leave me alone. I think you get it. I think one of the big challenges of reducing screen time, if you think that's a problem, is what do you do instead? And I'm offering you one option. Literally nothing. It has more value than 
I think many of you think it does. Maybe it would help to think of yourself in an RPG and you're in the hotel and you get in bed and you're reinvigorating your hit points and magic points and dexterity. I don't know. You don't lose dexterity in these games. Oh, I'm an idiot. I'm going to go sit alone, think more about RPGs so that I have them on call in my brain better next time. No, I'm not. Thanks for watching. There you have it, folks. Or as my wife would say, folks. Language is regional. YouTube thinks you like that video. My previous video is about why do people like the Oscars, which I thought was a really good one that hardly anyone watched, so do whatever you want. You can click there to subscribe and you can support me on Patreon. This is Craig Journaling Benzene, signing off. Now I'm going to sit here with my thoughts. Normally it goes better than this.